In today's video, we're going to be talking about silver coins, rounds, and bars designed for collectors from different series and different sets, a lot of which with a very high premium. And I'm also going to be going live in the VIP club tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Link in the description if you want to join. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another video. Hope you're doing well, feeling great, and enjoying freedom. It's a great day to have a great day. Today, I wanted to talk about silver. More specifically, I wanted to talk about collectible silver from different coin series or sets all around the world, some new, some old, some with low premium, some with high premium, some rare, some common. We're going to get into it, but really quick, just in case you're new. Make sure to subscribe for daily videos. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Brand new video over there. Go check it out. The link will be in the description. And if you want to get some DYDSS merchandise to help support the channel, I would really, really, really appreciate it. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. But today is Wednesday, August 11th, 2021. The current spot price of silver as I'm recording the video is $23.45. Technically a green day for silver, even though it's still really far down, up 12 cents today. Spot price of gold, similar to silver, $1,748.80. Slight green day for gold, still definitely down though, up 20 bucks. And the current gold to silver ratio is 74 to 1. Of course, that's as I'm filming the video, not as I'm editing, posting, or as you're watching. So head on down to the comments and let me know the date and time you're viewing the video and what the current spot price is for you. I'm always curious. So today, I wanted to talk about collectible silver. Coins from all over the place. Coins from different series. Why I'm not necessarily much of a collector. I've never been much of a collector. Although, at one point in my life, I did have a coin collection. We'll get into that momentarily. I just want to talk about what I have on screen right here. Eh, a little bit of everything. Some of the coins that I usually have on display for my videos. Bunch of, bunch of junk up there at the top. Over here we have a 25th and 30th anniversary Canadian Maple Leaf. Kraken, two Queen's Beasts, Aztec Calendar, Silver Eagle Type 1 and Type 2 Maple Leaf, Kangaroo, and then a couple other miscellaneous coins from different countries there at the bottom. Today I wanted to talk about coin collecting. The reason I wanted to talk about this was because I actually just saw something pretty unique on Instagram just last night. It was on this page that I've been familiar with for quite a bit of time now. It's a guy who collects pretty much everything. And I don't exactly know how accurate this post is, but he put up a picture of this really old Coca-Cola can. And apparently it's an antique, it's sandy, it's old, but evidently it's worth $1.69 million. I have no idea how accurate that is, or where he got that number from, or really anything about it. But I thought it was pretty cool, and anybody who knows me knows that I'm a big fan of KO, big fan of Coca-Cola. Not really the products, but the company. And I thought it was pretty interesting. And it made me think about, okay, it's a collectible Coca-Cola can. This guy collects a whole bunch of other stuff. Maybe I should do a video talking about coins that people collect and some of my collectible coins. So first thing I want to say is that when I was a kid, I actually did have a mediocre coin collection. My grandparents had gotten me this big cardboard map of the U.S. with a slot for each state. And it was basically my job to go through spare change and look for each state quarter, get to 50, complete the map. Did I do it? No, I didn't. I did not. I got about halfway through, though, and then somehow I lost interest. I think I found a skateboard or something. I don't know. But I did have a little bit of a mediocre coin collection, if you even want to call it that, as a kid. Fast forward about three and a half years ago, I discovered silver, started stacking silver, and I've been stacking for weight. I've been trying to get my hands on the physical silver content over the last three and a half going on four years at this point. And still, 
to this date, I'm not collecting any particular coin round or bar. At the end of the day, I don't care what it is. Oftentimes, I'll get the same exact coins over and over and over and over again. Because I'm looking for the silver, not any particular coin. And if the premiums drop on something significantly, something that I'm typically not really interested in, and it's a lower premium than something that I would normally be stacking, I'm going to shift my focus to that. Because I'm just trying to get the most bang for my buck. I'm trying to get the most money for my currency. I don't really care about any coin in particular. But there are a couple of different types of coins or a couple of different ways you can go about collecting. And one thing I actually tried out a couple months into the stacking journey for me, I actually decided that I wanted to try to get a Silver Eagle from every year. I think I got about maybe 15 years in, starting with the 1987 because the 86 was the first year and the premium was astronomical and I, I did not have it in me to pay those crazy high premiums. So I started with the 87 and I said, eh, I'll get to the 86 eventually. I have maybe about 15 in a tube and then I realized that I was like, well, these aren't exactly coins that I should be capsulating, so maybe it's not worth buying tubes and capsules to store them that way. Not to mention, it takes up twice as much space in the safe, putting them in airtight tubes rather than mint tubes. So I kind of cut that off after about maybe 15 of the years. That's about as close as I've come to coin collecting in recent years. I just thought it would be kind of a fun thing to do. In addition to trying to get a very particular coin from every year, I mean, you could do this with the Chinese Panda. You could do this with a lot of different coins out there that change the design every year. The Silver Eagle doesn't change the design every year. It's just something that I wanted to do anyway, and then I stopped. But you can do that with coins from other countries as well. Or you can go for really old coins, coins with that numismatic value. Some really old stuff, kind of like this right here, or this right here, or this right here, or maybe even this right here. You can go for some really old coins. They have that collector's value. They have that numismatic value. They obviously have melt value, which is the main reason I'm stacking the coins for. But there's something else we can talk about as well. We can always go after something much more new something that doesn't carry such a wild, wacky premium. Coins kind of like the Queen's Beast. I have two. All I have. This one's my favorite of the two. My actual favorite is the Griffin. I just don't have one. Premium is way too wild for me. But this one's cool. The Yale. Also have the Greyhound. That's the latest and final piece of the puzzle, aside from the new Queen's Beast collector's coin, where it has each of them on it, a completer coin, whatever it's called. I don't have one of those either. Or you can go for something like the Royal Canadian Mints. They, they, they come out with so many different coin series, so many different sets. And by the way, I just want to throw this in there. As I said earlier in the video, I will be going live in the VIP club tonight, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are going to be talking about coins as we do every single Wednesday, but this stream, I'm going to bring something out that's actually very valuable. It doesn't have that intrinsic value that the silver and gold has, but while we're on the subject of things that we collect, things that appreciate in value, things that can be considered high in demand, and people are willing to pay crazy prices for them. I have some pretty valuable stuff that doesn't even have to do with silver and gold. I'm going to be showing that in the VIP club tonight, and I'm not going to be clipping it and using it for a future video. That's VIP exclusive, so if you want to hang out and talk about things that we collect, link in the description. 
Another thing I wanted to talk about, this is something that I actually considered. Since the Royal Canadian Mint comes out with so many different series and sets, such as the Birds of Prey or the Predator series, they have so many different coins, so many different coins that you can collect. Some of them are four pieces of the puzzle, some of them are five or six pieces of the puzzle. I always thought that they were cool. I never got any though, until 2020. The Royal Canadian Mint came out with a new series called Creatures of the North. Now I talk about this kind of a lot, so I'm not even going to get too much into it, but this was the first coin, the Kraken, it's a two ounce piece. I would say this is probably my favorite looking coin that I have. It's just such a cool design. And if they started with such a banger, I figured the next couple of coins, or the entire series rather, would be really nice. So I got this one with the intention of getting the following ones. Two were supposed to be released every year. Well, 2020 happened and I guess that screwed things up, but here we are closer to 2022 than we are New Year's Day of this year. We still don't have the second piece. So I don't know what's going on over there, but if and when it ever gets released, I'm going for it. Now there's something else that I think we can talk about. There's something else that I don't think really constitutes as a series or a set that people would collect. This is just something that I came up with, and I guess you can say I've been collecting the International Troy Ounce of Gold. This is not a series. This is just something that I came up with. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm currently 60% of the way done with my international Troy ounce of gold. 10 different 10th ounce gold coins from 10 different countries. My goal is to get four more, but to be honest with you, I'm a little bit more focused on quarter ounce gold coins now. Here's one. And if I get three more from three different countries, I'll have an international Troy ounce of gold made up of four quarter ounce gold coins from four different countries. That should probably be easier than getting my hands on 10 different coins. Technically, I'm closer to completing this international Troy ounce than that international Troy ounce. By the way, I would like to get myself a quarter ounce Type 2 Gold Eagle soon, and I definitely want to get myself a quarter ounce 2021 Britannia. And then for the fourth one, I'll probably get a maple leaf because gold maples are absolutely beautiful. And boom, four different quarter ounce gold coins from four different countries. I don't know if you'd really want to call that collecting necessarily. It's not too difficult to do, and it's not from a series or anything like that, but it's a little project that I've been working on. As for these, we have the American Eagle. It's a type one. We have a South African Krugerrand. We got the Britannia. We got the Kookaburra, Australia the Maple Leaf, and the Philharmonic from Austria. Six out of 10. Again, I don't know if that's something that you'd want to call a collection. It doesn't really strike me as much of a collection, but call it whatever you want. It's just something that I thought was pretty fun, something that I thought was pretty unique, pretty interesting. Prior to me coming up with the idea, I had never heard of anyone doing that before. I had never seen it before. I didn't get it from anyone or anywhere. I kind of just came up with the idea. I thought it would be kind of a cool thing to do. An international Troy ounce. And for those of you who are into investing, you could probably call it an index coin, like an index fund. But that's about as close as I've gotten to 
coin collecting. I guess one could technically argue if you're just picking up coins no matter what they are, you're collecting coins, but if you're gonna really get into it, I'm really not a collector. I'm stacking silver for the weight. I'm stacking gold for the weight. Of course, with the international trials, I'm having some fun. And the reason I haven't picked up the remaining four pieces of the puzzle is because I'm unwilling to pay the higher premium, especially the higher premium on, let's just say a 10th ounce gold Libertad. Screw that. Have you seen what those are going for? According to spot price melt value, each little 10th ounce gold coin is supposed to be between 170 and 180 dollars. You could probably round that up to closer to 200 dollars on average because 10th ounces carry a high premium to begin with. But the premiums on 10th ounce gold Libertads? Oh my god, I've seen some of those going for 300 dollars. Imagine getting 10 of those to equate to a troy ounce. That's 3,000 bucks. Spot price isn't even 1,800. Screw that. Doesn't make sense, which is why I've taken a little bit of a step away from the 10th ounces, and I want to focus on quarter ounces now. Maybe even half ounces if spot price falls down a little bit more. It's a little bit steep. Can't see myself putting that much cash into just one coin. I'd rather have it broken up a little bit, which is why I think the quarter ounces is kind of like the best of both worlds significantly more fair premiums, small denomination, easy to work with, obviously easy to hide, transport, do whatever you want with. But in conclusion, I'm really not collecting coins. I've never really gotten into it. It's not anything that interests me necessarily. I'm stacking for weight. I do have some collectible coins, but I really don't care enough to start or complete any particular series or set and I'm also unwilling to pay crazy high premiums just for the sake of having a collectible coin doesn't really matter too much to me I don't care about that I'm in it for the weight of course I do have some coins that are I guess you can say collectible but I didn't get them for crazy high premiums I got this for pretty close to spot. I got uh, this Queen's Beast for pretty close to spot. I got this one for a very fair premium because I pre-ordered it. 25th anniversary Maple Leaf. I actually ordered a Cull Maple Leaf and this just coincidentally randomly showed up. So I got this for the price of a Cull Maple Leaf back when spot price was 14, 15 bucks and premiums were only like one or two dollars. So I got this for close to spot as well. That 30th anniversary maple was not pricey, but I did pay a little bit higher of a premium for it. That Aztec calendar round, that's not really much of a high premium piece either. As for the really old coins, the numismatics and whatnot, I haven't picked up any of those on my own. A few have been sent to me as gifts to my P.O. box, but I don't have any desire to pay high premiums for super old coins. And then as for the gold, for me it's just more of a fun way of getting my hands on it and working on a little bit of a project. But at the end of the day, I do have doubles of some of these coins just because I picked them up before I came up with the international troy ounce of gold idea. I'm not opposed to getting more doubles, triples, quadruples of the same coin. Doesn't matter to me. At the end of the day, I'm lasered in on the silver and the gold. I just like to spice things up sometimes. And the International Troy Ounce of Gold was just a fun little project I decided to come up with. Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Are you into coin collecting at all? Have you ever been much of a coin collector? Or are you a little bit more focused on stacking for weight when it comes to the precious metals? And if anybody's interested in joining the Precious Metals VIP Club, it's where I can do things on my own terms. Not on YouTube's terms. My terms. I'm hosting privately held live streams. They're smaller and easier to manage. I'm posting exclusive VIP-only adventure vlogs. I also do giveaways, discounts, personalized promo codes. 
shout outs, deal alerts when silver and gold is on sale on a variety of different websites. And of course, you can watch all of my videos early and commercial free. Come join the Precious Metals VIP Club. It'll be the first link in the description. You're invited. I'd be happy to have you. And if you guys enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button. If you guys like me, make sure to hit that subscribe button like a Karen hits a bus window. Also subscribe to my second channel, which is my backup channel for exclusive weekly content. Bunch of brand new videos over there. I posted one about China banning cryptocurrency, one about AT&T cutting its dividend, other videos about real estate, videos about silver, videos about gold, and a bunch of others. Go check them out. The link will be in the description. Trying really hard to hit 3,000 subscribers. We just hit 2,000, and I appreciate that. And if you want to help support the channel in the biggest possible way, please consider getting yourself some DYDSS merchandise. Of course, we have some precious metal themed t-shirts and hoodies, which are up for grabs, along with a ton of other products. T-shirts, hoodies, even stickers, many of which are raising funds and awareness for different charity organizations, such as the recently released Kraken Stackin' T-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug, inspired by the beautiful two-ounce silver Kraken coin, which, by the way, is helping us raise a little bit of funds and awareness for ocean cleanup charity organizations at no additional cost to you. It comes out of my pocket, not yours. And of course, last but not least, the brand new DYDSS Karen Free Zone t-shirt, hoodie, sticker, and coffee mug. My name is not Karen. Any and all merchandise can be found by clicking the first link in the description section down below. Thank you in advance. It's more than appreciated. And I want you guys to head on down to the comments and let me know once again, what are your thoughts on everything shared in today's video? When it comes to coin collecting, is it something that you do? Do you go after the numismatics? Do you go after maybe the Creatures of the North or the Birds of Prey series or anything like that? Maybe you like the commemoratives or the special anniversary type of coins, 25th anniversary, 30th anniversary in a few years. Maybe we'll have a 35th anniversary coin. Do you go after any coins like that? Do you try to get a very specific coin from every year without missing a year? And maybe you're kind of backtracking and kind of getting those older years now. And then when it comes to an international troy ounce of gold, is that something you're working on too? I know plenty of people have been commenting over the years saying that they like the idea so much that they're actually starting an international troy ounce of gold for themselves. Is that something that you're working on? Is that something you would ever consider? Head on down to the comments and let me know anything and everything related to today's video topic. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you tomorrow. And remember, don't you dare stop smiling. Peace.